So guys, I wanna do a driving demonstration, but I first wanted to show you how annoying the seatbelt chimer is. If you don't put your seatbelt on, it just gets very annoying. Like it will, the beeping you hear, it will continue and continue and continue. So I'm gonna put my seatbelt on. I know I'm supposed to have my seatbelt on, but if you think you're gonna use this vehicle for farm use, and you just wanna drive from point A to B on the farm, no, you gotta put your seatbelt on. So anyway, I'm doing a driving, and I'm gonna show you how to, uh, do the lane keep assist so right now it has lane keep assist on but it's not on lane centering so i'm going to show you how well that works if you look up here you can see the two white solid lines and as i get over here on the white line i don't have my hand on the steering wheel i'm just going to show you how it works you see how it bumped me back over so a car is approaching i always make sure i have my hand on the steering wheel when a car is approaching so i'm going to try to get over to the orange line a little bit and you're going to see so I actually went over to the white line and you saw how it gently brought me back over. It's a very mild response to it for in that case, something that needed a much more um, dramatic response. So again, let's see, it's gonna try to cut me that way. You can see it turn the wheel on its own. Um, this aspect of the car is not so bad. It, to me, it's a little bit more gentle than I would like to see, but it works. And so now I'm gonna show you how the lane keep assist works when you turn on lane centering you literally have to activate the cruise control for that Ford is also like this I don't I don't really like that so now it's on lane centering so Ford Explorer is the same way um, Kia Telluride and uh, Palisade you don't have to turn on cruise control in order for it to be on lane centering it can be on lane centering even without cruise control which I think is awesome so anyway I'm gonna show you how it works I don't have my hand on the wheel but you can see it's if you look at the wheel real closely, you can see that the wheel is actually moving on its own, even though the road is pretty straight here. And you're gonna have to let the system know that you're still here, so I will just, every 10 seconds or so, just touch the wheel. I'm gonna keep my hand on the wheel because the cars are approaching me and I don't want the computer to do anything that may result in someone getting injured. So I'm just gonna keep my hand on here, but I'm removing my hand just so you can see the input of the car. So you can see it move me over. Um, it's moving me over here. Right now the system is mostly doing okay, but let me just show you again. I'm gonna show you how horrible it really is. It really is not good. It's hard for me to do it with all these cars out here because they just, they're requiring me to put my hand on the wheel too often for you to see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it can't handle a curve like this. You can forget that. The Santa Fe that I had, it could. So you're like, this is not gonna handle that curve. It's all over the white, or all over the orange line right there. I have my hands off the wheel again. It's probably a car over this hill, so I'm gonna have to, I can't demonstrate it as I want, but you can see this wheel is actually moving back and forth. It's not really staying in the center of the road very well. It's shooting me back over here. I'm putting my hand back on because of the car. Um, this system really just isn't that good. Um, so it's moving over. Now it's moving on to the orange side car is coming so I got to put my hand by so let's see how well it follows this curve here I don't have my hands on the wheel so now now it's about to go off the white side we're way on the white side we're running all over the line it's just not that good it is the worst I've seen the Hyundai I had would just go right around that curve like no problem same way with the Ford Explorer it would have just made that curve like it was no problem but this one no hands again it's probably gonna struggle on this is a very mild curve it really should handle this one so far so good but as we get in the this part of the curve we're all over the orange line like it is not good at all it's really this is the worst i've seen and it takes forever to correct itself like honda would have already centered by now look at this This is all over the orange line it's just it's terrible this is terrible this is the worst lane keep assist i've ever seen up when it comes to lane center and it goes over the line almost every time even in the mildest curves it, it seems like it's better at staying off that white line than it is the orange line but it's still terrible i mean look at how it's it's tottering back and forth it can't make its mind up where the center is the good thing is is it does keep me when it finally makes its mind up it is in the middle of the lane but you can see how much it's tottering like it's it's tottering a lot 
the Hyundai I had would have just made a beeline straight down the road. Same way with the Hyundai Ford Explorer. Even the um, Acura MDX, they just travel straight down. This one is literally all over the place like this. This is terrible. So anyway, I thought I would just demonstrate that, guys. One other thing I wanted to mention that I failed to mention earlier in this vehicle is um, every time you go to park, it engages the park and brake. You hear the park and brake motor engage every single time. To me, it just seems like that's excessive wear and tire on that um, on the park and brake actuator that just is not necessary, particularly when you park on a flat level surface. You don't need your parking brake engage every single time. So anyway, I would just I thought I would demonstrate the lane keep assist. It is horrible. It is the very rock bottom worst lane keep assist I've seen in the industry.